morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, I wanted to share with you some of the work that my, um, my group is doing uh, in this area. Um, as we uh, see machine learning um, start to be used increasingly throughout society, um, it introduces a new security risk that I think we need to uh, prepare ourselves for and, and uh, develop defenses against. In particular, um, when we have systems that are powered by machine learning and making decisions using machine learning uh, automatically, autonomously, um, what we're discovering in the research community is that this opens up a, an avenue for attack known as adversarial examples, um, where um, an attacker who can uh, control some of the inputs to that system can manipulate its behavior. So an example um, that we'll look at um, would be today self-driving cars heavily powered by machine learning. And um, this might introduce new opportunities for attackers to modify the environment, to confuse the machine learning and cause the, the car to deliberately cause uh, the self-driving car to crash. So I thought I'd start with a few examples from the literature to kind of motivate uh, work in this area. Here you can see um, uh, attack uh, from, from one group of researchers from 2017, where they found that if they added some stickers to a stop sign, they could cause it to be uh, misclassified um, in this case, I think the left-hand side stop sign uh, gets classified as the speed limit 25 sign, and I forget what the right side one, maybe it's a yield. Uh, obviously, you don't want um, a car to think that, that what's actually a stop sign at the intersection is, is, is a speed limit 25 sign. Um, uh, here's another example from uh, last year, researchers uh, uh, looking at um, LIDAR perception systems in, in self-driving cars, um, which uh, use... Um, uh, a laser to sense the surrounding and then use machine learning to try to make sense of what that sensor is showing. And they were able to show how to fool the machine learning to construct an object, this white white thing here that um, has a shape that uh, is deliberately constructed to be invisible to the machine learning algorithm. So the, the car doesn't see anything on the road. Uh, here's another example of uh, work that researchers did uh, in the lab on, on one, um, one publicly available um, uh, machine learning based system for a automatic uh, lane following, where um, on the left, I'm showing an example uh, image captured by the front facing camera on a, on a car. Um, you could see the cars in the, in the right hand lane. And um, the, the left is the unmodified image and um, the lane following system, the ML causes the car to drive a little bit curved to the right. And the right-hand image, you can't see it, but this right-hand image has been modified slightly. What if an attacker could introduce some imperfections in the road surface that were very carefully chosen to, to fool the machine learning while well, these researchers showed that it's possible to construct them that cause the machine learning to steer to the left, um, right into incoming traffic, not good. And uh, more recently, researchers have showed um, uh, that this could plausibly be mounted in practice. They showed how to mount a patch attack where you uh, print some carefully constructed pattern on this uh, rubber mat the attacker could lay out on the road. It's constructed to be kind of not too obvious that it's going on. And what they found was that um, um, caused the cause the steering system be constructed to cause the steering system to steer the car way out of the lane and so rapidly that a human would not be likely to be able to recover and respond in time to avoid a crash. A lot of this stuff has been done in the lab uh, um, on, um, on prototypes and on theoretical systems as kind of a warning of, of the dangers that, that we might be running into, we might face in the future. Um, but there's been one work that showed that um, uh, some of these risks may apply to, to, to cars today. Um, this is a, a research report that was released last year um, looking at a, a Tesla car that found that by putting three dots on the road, they could confuse the lane following system, the machine learning based uh, uh, lane following system into thinking that the lane curves to the left and the car suddenly jerks to the left and starts driving to the left when it sees these three little dots that you can, you can barely see. I had to circle them for you to, to identify where they are. So what this is highlighting is that as we integrate machine learning into our systems, we're opening them up to a new kind of attack. And machine learning systems we use today are very fragile. So um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of my group's work on trying to defend against these problems. What can we do about this problem to get ahead of it? 
um, before it starts to get exploited widely in the wild. And so I thought I'd just tell you about a couple of different projects that we're taking, looking at different angles to try to how to look to make machine learning more robust against manipulation and these kinds of attacks. Um, right now, there's um, three state-of-the-art approaches um, that researchers have come up with over the past five years. Um, adversarial training, where it's kind of like an immune system. It's kind of like vaccinating the machine learning system by exposing it in advance to some example attacks. Um, there's generative models um, where um, the defense works by um, machine learning, uh, learns how to produce example images. Here's an image of a stop sign, learns how to produce an image of a speed limit 25 sign. And we, we try to check, is it possible, is it possible, if I think it's a stop sign, can I gen generate an image, can I generate a stop sign image that looks like the one I've got in front of me? And randomized smoothing says, let's add some noise. And counterintuitively, normally you think of noise as giving you worse results, but, but adding noise to the images um, uh, seems, to, seems to make the machine learning classifiers less fragile, less susceptible to these kind of attacks. So um, we're looking at projects to improve all of those and to find some new, new approaches. So I thought I'd just kind of give you some, some highlights, some of them. Um, we're looking at um, improving defenses based on generative models. Um, here you can see us, um, uh, we've been applying this to uh, recognizing traffic signs. And the, the way you use a generative model is that we, we use machine learning to figure out um, common patterns of speed limit signs of stop signs. And so for instance, we have a model that can generate many different example images of a stop sign. We have another one that can generate many different images of a, a different speed limit signs of a yield sign. And then um, if the car sees an image of a sign, doesn't know what kind of sign it is, wants to figure out what kind of sign that is, to classify that, what we do is we use our model for each type of sign to try to construct an image of that type that's as similar to the one we're given as possible. So we try to make a, a speed limit 30 sign that's as similar to the one shown at the top. And the, that's, that's, the, that's the closest we could get with our model. That's quite close. You can see it reconstructs a, a speed sign, 30 sign that looks very similar to, to what we're actually seeing in, in the wild. And we also try to generate one for speed limit 50 that looks as similar as possible. And our model in this case is able to generate a speed limit 50 sign that looks pretty similar, except that it's not, it's not quite right because it's got a three instead of a five. And we do the same for a stop sign, a yield sign. And we look which one of those cl most closely matches um, the sign we actually saw in the wild. Okay, so that's how these generative models work. And in this case, the closest match is uh, indeed the speed limit 30. So a car would say that's a speed limit 30 sign I'm dealing with. Okay, so it's a different, different approach to classification than how we normally do machine learning today. And um, researchers have found that um, uh, it seems to add robustness. So we've made some improvements to this. And, and I will show you um, uh, just, just a short summary of our results. Um, uh, to today's uh, machine learning systems, uh, an example that would be an undefended convolutional neural net. So you can see that has a quite good accuracy when it's not under attack, but the robustness, meaning when it is under attack, is very poor. And it's very, very fragile. It's very easy to attack this system. Um, Shot introduced this generative notion last year, and what they found was that it gives significantly better security. But um, when the system's not under attack, um, the performance really degrades. And um, um, adversarial training uh, is, is, is better. Um, and our scheme um, is, is better still. It's actually the, the best, the state of the art um, performance on um, SVHN, which is um, reading, um, reading uh, uh, street numbers data set from uh, Taken in the Wild. It has the, um, has the best uh, robustness of any known scheme and also has a better accuracy when it's not under attack than other defenses, though it's not quite as good as an undefended scheme. Uh, we also looked at traffic signs. And again, it's the same story. Um, our scheme has the best robustness of any known scheme. Um, and, um, but there's still a cost when you're not under attack. So the cost you pay for security is that you get um, worse results when you're not under attack. All right, so that's an example project defense for these specific data sets. Uh, we've been looking at improving adversarial training with this very simple, simple idea that if you wanna learn a really complicated subject, you don't start with the hardest material first, you build your way up, starting from the basics and then you build your way up. And so um, we're looking at training machine learning models with that same idea. And we found that that, that helps. 
if you want um, security against attacks. Um, so here are some results. The blue line is our scheme. The black line is a standard standard defense and um, higher is better. And so in some regimes, our scheme is doing, doing better. Um, we've been looking at defending against uh, sticker attacks. One kind of very plausible, uh, physically plausible attack is the attacker um, adds a few stickers to the object. And it turns out that our machine learning algorithms are quite vulnerable to this. They can um, uh, really get confused. And um, so uh, we've been looking at defenses against that. And um, um, that kind of idea is you cover up different parts of the image and see if that changes the classification. And don't worry about the details, but we were able to show that um, the amount of um, uh, guarantees we can provide against sticker attacks are um, uh, beating the state of the art. And actually, this is changing. Um, just that we published this work this year, and already there are new papers coming out that are doing better than our scheme. So this is a rapidly evolving area. It's really neat to see the progress that's happening here. Um, uh, we're looking at improving randomized smoothing. Randomized smoothing typically adds Gaussian noise um, to an image and then classifies that. And it's been found that this, this helps a lot um, against uh, stopping these attacks because the attacker won't know what kind of noise is going to be added. And we're looking at adding not just Gaussian noise, but other kinds of modifications. We, we blur the image randomly a certain amount. We may jitter the images a little bit. We may take a random crop. We may make all sorts of random small changes to the image that are random, so not predictable to an attacker before we classify. And what we found um, is that this uh, looks like it significantly improves on the basic idea um, on a 10 class uh, object recognition data set. We're doing better than adversarial training and better than the basic a randomized smoothing. So this is an active area of research we're looking at right now, but right now early results suggest that there could be something promising here. Um, we're looking on um, uh, making uh, lane detection for self-driving cars um, more um, secure. Um, current lane detection algorithms, as I showed you in some of these examples, are very fragile. Attackers um, who can modify the road and make a little markings, leave dots or put this rubber pat mat on the road can, can fool lane detection and, and potentially cause cars to crash, which is not great. We'd ideally like to solve that problem. And so we're working on a defense that um, not just detects a lane, but when it thinks it's found a lane actually goes and, and verifies its own, its own work. And in this way, we're able to uh, detect 75% uh, of attacks that, that try to create a fake lane that would make the car to crash. So not perfect yet. Um, and there is a cost um, that when it's not being attacked, uh, the performance at detecting lanes uh, drops drops a little bit. So there's more work to do here. And I thought I'd throw in a plug. We're doing other work on um, privacy as well. Um, can people detect malicious AI that might be um, deliberately out to, to, to try to uh, invade their privacy? And how can we help people detect the misbehaving AI? So in conclusion, um, I would say what we're trying to do here is um, the CLTC is working really hard to try to develop a set of techniques and a scientific foundation for machine learning systems of the future so that they can uh, resist the kind of uh, manipulation and attack and, and proactively uh, prepare ourselves for the kind of attacks we might face in the future. Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm.